Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. From the cobblestone streets of Europe to the cozy corners of home, it seems no one is safe from the wandering eyes and deceitful hearts of cheaters. Today on our space, no passport or plane ticket can protect you from the sting of betrayal. Up first, a cheater plans her exit strategy, all while an unsuspecting OP foots the bill. Found out my girlfriend has been cheating on me while on a trip across Europe. To start off, I have paid for most of the trip. She has helped financially by paying for some hotel stays and some meals while out there. The trip was my idea. It's partly to celebrate my birthday and Valentine's Day. I found out she was cheating on me because while in Madrid, we had an argument after a night out of drinking. The bar we were at had closed during the halftime of the Super Bowl. So upon closing, one of the employees got on top of a chair and started yelling at everyone to follow him to a bar around the corner. Apparently it was another bar owned by the same owner that would remain open to watch the remainder of the Super Bowl. When that happened, we had agreed to just go back to our hotel and watch the remainder on my phone while in bed. However, she needed to use the restroom. Since we were getting told to leave the bar, I told her they probably wouldn't let her go use it. I asked her if she could hold it for five minutes while we go to our hotel room. She said yes, but that we have to hurry, so I rushed out the bar with her, navigated our way to the hotel. During our walk over there, she asked to see my phone so that she could watch the Super Bowl halftime show while we were walking. I was still rushing and waiting for her as she was distracted watching the halftime show. We missed a green light because of her, causing us to wait for some traffic to pass before crossing the intersection. So we got to our hotel, rushed in. Upon being in the elevator, she started saying she couldn't hold it anymore. As soon as the elevator doors opened, she rushed out, slammed doors into the restroom, almost fell over the toilet making a loud noise at 3 a.m. She didn't make it, peed on herself slightly and I got upset at her. Didn't tell her anything, just nodded my head in disappointment. And we started arguing. She blamed it on me saying that I forced her to come back to the hotel and everything was my fault. Receptionists even came upstairs while that was going on and told us to be quiet and have respect for the guests that were sleeping. She had also spilled her drink all over the halls while running into the restroom. So I apologized, cleaned the mess she had done and went into our bedroom after. When I got in, she was really mad and drunk, telling me that I was an a-hole and that it was my fault. After explaining to her how we were forced out, she took forever walking to the hotel and going back and forth about whose fault it was, I just decided to accept it and take the blame for the sake of the trip. She then walked out and said she needed to talk to her mom. She tells her mom everything, even our relationship issues. I told her to stop and she decided to come back in and put the Super Bowl game on her phone. She watched it till she fell asleep. During that time, I used the restroom, showered, and got ready for bed. When I was finally done, she was sleeping but her phone was unlocked in the bed. She was completely knocked out drunk. Out of curiosity, I went through her phone, which I never do, to see if she had told her mom anything about us. She texted her mom, I'm breaking up with him after the trip. She told her that I was boring and that her ex-boyfriend from many years ago was better and also said another guy, which is her old co-worker. This guy I had met before and she had told me they were just friends. They still work at the same company, just different locations. So I proceeded to look up the messages with him and mostly it was regarding work, but then I came across some messages where she invited him over to her place. Some messages were either missing or they called each other. I can't prove 100% she cheated, but her telling her mom that he's better for her and seeing messages where she invites him over, I think is enough, right? I haven't said anything about it. I have kept quiet. We still have a week left on our Europe trip, so I'm pretending everything is okay. She also told her mom that she's going to have me keep paying for everything, so now I'm letting her pay for more things. The next day, she deleted the messages with her mom. I saw it because she sent a picture to her mom and showed me her messages briefly while showing me the picture she sent her mom. My plan is to pretend I know nothing. Enjoy the rest of the trip, have her spend more money and break up with her once we get back. Am I in the wrong? Let's see how the community reacts. First up, blunt, but not malicious. My tone may be off-putting, but I'm not trying to hurt you, usually. Break up now. Tell her she can find her own accommodation and return home. Either way, it won't be on you. Someone else chimes in. Came here to say this. She wants to use you for the rest of the trip and dump you. Dump her now so she can't. Enjoy the rest of your trip and don't let her use anything she paid for. Leave your next location and get your own hotel room. Don't respond to any messages, etc. She can enjoy the rest of her trip solo and have to pay for everything and not just what you make her pay for. One more person says, right on buddy. Also, please use protection if you sleep with her. I'm sorry you're going through this right now. I'd be devastated. I'm currently in Barcelona on a Euro trip as well with my girlfriend for her birthday and V-Day. 
I'd be heartbroken if I found some crap like that. Talk about some halftime drama. She couldn't hold her secrets any better than her bladder. And now she's planning to give you the boot after enjoying the perks you've been paying for? Would it even be worth spending the rest of the trip with someone you know has cheated or is cheating on you? I mean, you don't just invite some guy over and then attempt to delete the evidence. What would you do? Would you say and pretend all is okay? So much for happily ever after for our next OP. It's more like, caught you red-handed, now get lost. My, 24 female, husband, 25 male, cheated on me and I don't know what to do. Me and my husband have been together for almost four years. We dated for a year, engaged for a year, and married for almost two years. We've had issues in the past, having to do with his drinking and overindulgence. I would express my frustration every time he would get drunk, and he wouldn't see the big deal in it. He transitioned to only drinking on the weekends, but even then, he would drink and was still an issue because he wouldn't know when to stop. And he's the kind of man to never bring up his own frustrations with me unless he's been drinking. So whenever he'd get drunk and I'd express my annoyance with him, it would turn into a huge argument about past things that he's held on to about things that I do that upset him. We've never had issues with trust, and I honestly never thought that he would do this to me. At the end of summer time last year, we decided to move to a different state because the one we were living in, we could not afford anymore. Before we moved, he talked about going to a different denomination of Christianity that we'd been going to. He grew up a Christian, but not really going to church regularly until he met me. I grew up Pentecostal and have been going to church since I was a child. His family over the last five or so years have come to the Orthodox Christians, which he became very interested in. Before we moved, I told him I would try going to this church if this is something he wanted to try. But if I didn't like it, I don't want to be forced to go to this church. He said he wouldn't force me into anything, and that was that. So fast forward, we moved here and started going to that church. His drinking was still an issue, and even though I thought the church and everyone there was very kind, I just didn't feel right going there. I expressed that to him, and he told me I should bring my concerns to the priest of the church. I haven't done that, and I don't know if I will. Fast forward to a month-ish ago. It was a Friday night, and I was at work. He works construction, and I work in the service industry, so we have opposite schedules most of the time. He decided to go out to a bar with his brother and cousins and their friends. All of them are married or have girlfriends, and like I said, there's been no breach of trust ever, so I had no reason not to trust him. I got home from work around 10 p.m., and he called me and said I should come out. I said I don't really feel like it, and he said that's okay, and he'd be home soon. Two hours go by, and he's still out. He called me multiple times, multiple being like 10 times, drunk, and confused and lost and alone. So I told him to get an Uber back home. He said okay, but then I heard his brother on the other end say, there you are. So I told him to stay with his brother and come home soon. Two hours go by. It's 2 a.m. and all the bars close at this time. We share our locations with each other so I could see where he was. I texted him and told him to get home and I fell asleep by my phone. I get a call from his brother saying that they lost him and they couldn't find him and they had left him downtown alone. So I call him again and I heard a woman on the other end laughing. He picks up and says, hello. And I said, who is that? And he said, just a friend. I said, don't lie to me, who is that? He said, there's no one here. Listen, silence. He blatantly lies. So I said, get home now. If you're not home in 20 minutes, I'm locking you out. He says, okay. I watch his location start to move like 10 minutes later. We live like 15 minutes from where he was and it took him an hour to get home. I watched his location go into different neighborhoods and turn around and he took the weirdest and longest way home. His location never stopped during those movements so I don't even know if anything more than what I ended up seeing happened. So an hour goes by of me watching his location and eventually gets to an intersection a minute away from our house. Then his location stops moving and his phone says it's at 0%. Life 360 tells you their battery percentage, but he was a minute away from the house, so no big deal. 20 minutes go by, he's still not home. So I decided to get in my car and go drive to where his location was last updated. Drive around the gas stations, there was no parked cars, nothing. So I drive back home, check his location again, and it shows me that it's back down the road that he already came down. So I got in my car again and started driving towards him until his location started to move towards me again. I drove home and watched the location until finally they pull in, in front of our house. I was watching from our window through the blinds, peeking through so he couldn't see me watching. It was dark out so I could only see their silhouettes, but I watched as he leaned over to the driver's side that looked like they were kissing. He leaned back over after probably a minute or so of them kissing. I watched him turn the dome light on in the car and I could see them, talking and smiling. 
He turns the light back off and leaned back over and kissed her again. Another minute of making out ensues and I finally stormed downstairs, threw on my jacket and walked out there. I opened the passenger door of the car where he was and they were still making out. He turned and looked at me, drunk out of his mind and unrecognizable. I looked at him and told him to stay the F away from me and to not come inside. And we're done. I looked at the girl and said, you can take him to wherever you're going. I stormed back inside and locked all the doors, went upstairs and locked myself in the spare room. It was four in the morning at this point. I'm trying to call my friends and nobody will answer. I looked out my window and saw him standing at the front. The car had gone now. Finally, one of my friends answers. I'm bawling and I told her he cheated on me. Downstairs, I could hear the door being broken in and I heard him come inside. The door was fine, but he broke the trim of the door to get it open. I grabbed my purse, my coat, and stayed on the phone with my friend. I went to walk out the door and he asked where I was going and I told him, away from you. He said, no, stay, we're talking about this. And I said, no. He tried to come near me and I told him to get away. I turned around and asked him why. And his response was, what do you do for me? I laughed because I literally couldn't believe what he said. Then I walked out to my car and opened the door. I pressed the lock button when I opened it. He followed me and grabbed my door, not letting me close it. I said, let go. He said, get inside now. And we just kept repeating the same things, getting louder and louder. Eventually, I shoved him hard enough where he stumbled back and let go of the door, giving me enough time to close it. He tried to open it. Realizing it was locked, he hit my window and stormed inside. I drove away, still on the phone with my friend. Eventually, my sister-in-law, who lives a couple hours from me, answered. My friend that answered originally lives in the state we moved from. She said to go to my brother-in-law's house because he was the closest to me, only like 20 minutes. Long story short, sister-in-law and her husband, my husband's brother, drive up from where they live. They went to go check on my husband before coming to me. When they walked in our house, he was passed out on the floor of our living room. Then without me having a say in it, they drove him to where I was staying. To make an already long story short, he basically said he feels alone and that I don't do enough for him. He feels like he does all the cooking and cleaning, etc., which I can admit that I could do better on that, but that's no excuse for what he did. And he feels alone emotionally because he doesn't share his true emotions with me unless he's been drinking. So how am I supposed to know he feels a certain way if he doesn't tell me out of fear of making me upset, which we've had multiple conversations about this. I told him it doesn't matter if it makes me mad. He still needs to say something instead of letting it fester. Still nothing changes in the behavior. I packed a bag and stayed the night at his cousin's house because nothing came of the first conversation. He said he was done drinking completely that first night I stayed at his cousin's. I drove over to our house to see if he kept his promise and I walk in and there was an empty either 12 or 18 rack of beer. I can't remember which amount it was. I said, you already broke my trust again. And I asked why he was drinking and he said, well, I didn't know you were coming home. I walked away laughing because I couldn't believe the excuse. I said that he should be begging on his knees for me not to leave him. I said how lucky he was to have me. I am the most loyal person you will ever meet. And I have had many men approach me wanting to ask me out, but I never thought for a second about doing anything like that because I'm married. My friends bought me a ticket home the next day and I stayed there for a couple of days. I made the decision to stay and to try and work on it because I love him so much. I told him he needs to quit drinking, which he has for almost a month now. No more nicotine. He needs to get on ADHD medication. He needs to get his license back. He got a DUI two weeks before split wedding. And we need to go to a different church. He also has surgery he needs to get done. He hasn't done any of these things for himself since we've been together, which now he's taken some initiative and gotten appointments for most of these things. But since I've moved back in, I've been having to remind him, just like before, that he needs to get this stuff done. I feel like a mother to him sometimes. We have an appointment for marriage counseling next week. We had to fill out intake forms for it, and I read his, and he stated that the only issues we have is trust because of his infidelity, even though we have a lot more issues than that. I'm struggling with the thought of this happening again 10 years down the line, but then we have kids involved. I'm struggling with the fact that he might come to resent me because he wants to go to that church, but I don't want to. He said he'll go to a different church because he wants to save our marriage, which sounds like a very likely possibility of resentment arising in the future. I'm afraid that he will go right back to what he was doing before and making me nag him over and over about certain things. I know this is long and I don't know how subreddits work, so this could get taken down. I just don't know what to do anymore. I would love honest advice. I can answer any questions because I couldn't very well fit all our relationship fights or conversations in one post. Edit. Something important I should have definitely included is that he did apologize multiple times. Not the night it happened, but when his family brought him over to see me, he did apologize. He is the one that brought up counseling, if that makes any difference. 
let's see how the community reacts. First up, he wasn't even sorry at all. Shifted the blame to you and you still went back? Why would he change or do what needs to be done when you went running back when there was zero remorse, zero apology, and zero action on his end? So you only have yourself to blame. You should have left and stayed gone. Someone else chimes in. Please have respect for yourself and leave this guy. He will not change. Do you want to be cheated on while pregnant? While he waits for you to heal after birth? When you're old and he wants a younger model? Do you want to worry every time he's off without you? That's the life you're headed for. Get out now while you still have youth. You've handed out enough chances and it seems like he's still stuck in rehearsal mode, practicing his lines of excuses and empty promises. Why stay in a rerun of Heartbreak when you could be writing a new script for yourself? Take center stage, embrace your worth, and exit stage left from this sorry excuse for a relationship. And remember, the best revenge is living well without him, or with someone who actually knows how to treat you right. What would you do? Have you had a similar experience? Share it with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time.